before we get started with the tour, I thought I'd tell you guys about UBC Wayfinding. It's basically a part of the UBC website that shows you the whole map of the university. You can search up where buildings are based on their name or their code name as it shows up on your class schedule, which I think is only four letters. And you can also do a second search to see where the second building is in relation to the first one that you searched up. And then once you have that, you can click on this to get the Google Maps directions. I mostly use this to see how long it would take me to walk from one building to the other when I was making my class schedule. So if I registered for back-to-back -back classes, I could tell if I had enough time to get there. Obviously, you can use Google Maps from the beginning, but sometimes I just preferred using this instead. Hi, it's Lena, and today I'm going to be showing you around my university, the University of British Columbia, also known as UBC. And it is a pretty big campus, so I'm not going to show you all of it, but I'm going to show you most of the main places. And if you want to see more of my university slash UBC related videos, I'm just going to have a whole playlist linked down below. But with that being said, let's just go ahead and get started. Starting with the Chan Center for the Performing Arts, this is of course where there will be performances and sometimes other special events including things like graduation. This is where I would have graduated if it wasn't for the pandemic. The building was locked when I was there so I'll just show you a picture of what it looks like inside. And depending on what kind of courses you decide to take, you might have class in some of the other rooms. I know I had a film studies class in here. Going back up the stairs next to the Chan Center is the Rose Garden, which actually had no roses at the time that I filmed this. The whole garden was kind of bare, but I think it's because it was reading break and it was still that winter season. But it's a really pretty view of the ocean and the mountains and it can be really peaceful. Now walking along Main Mall, which basically crosses the grand majority of campus and it's one of the walkways that you'll definitely be using a lot if you go to UBC. Our first stop along Main Mall is Buchanan. If you're in the Faculty of Arts, you'll definitely be taking a lot of your classes here because it's the arts building. There's different blocks or buildings. There's Buchanan A, B, C, and D with a bunch of different rooms like computer labs, smaller classrooms, study areas, and lecture halls like this one here. I didn't bother turning on the lights, but you get the idea. Over my undergrad, I think I had like five classes here. On the level below, there's a little cafe where you can get some snacks. And here's another one of the lecture halls that you'll also likely spend a lot of time in if you're in arts, I know I did. In between some of the Buchanan buildings, there's this courtyard. If it's a nice sunny day, these tables here can be a good spot to study. And now I'm just walking through this area of Buchanan and I actually noticed that the bike racks were mostly empty because it was reading break, but usually most of these are taken. Back on Main Mall, I thought I'd highlight the W. Robert Wyman Plaza, which I don't think anyone really calls it that, but that's its name. And the reason I'm highlighting it is because if you stand in the middle with your feet on the top of this thing here and talk, it amplifies your voice, but only to you. It just makes it sound kind of like you're using a microphone. I don't really know what this is called or how it works, but I think it's pretty cool and you should definitely try it if you visit campus. I think a lot of people actually don't know about this. Continuing on Main Mall, we've come to a pretty important part of campus where the two main libraries are. This one here is officially called the Irving K. Barber Learning Center, but people really just call it either Irving or IKB. And this more modern one is called the Walter C. Kerner Library, but we really just call it Kerner. All right, so I'm gonna begin by showing you Kerner and then we'll cross over to the other library. So right by the main entrance, there's this area here with a little computer lab and other spots to study. Then going up the stairs, they actually recently renovated these upper levels. Now there's some computer labs and other areas to study, but before there were individual desks along the sides of a bunch of bookshelves, you can probably see some of that in some of my weekly vlogs. I honestly preferred what it was like before, but that's okay. At least the view is still the same, which I do really like. Now going downstairs to the kind of basement area, there's also a bunch of different study areas here, but this basement area away from the windows and natural light was never really my preferred study spot, but it can definitely be really quiet down here with few distractions. One more level 
level below going all the way to the end. I've actually kind of been walking underground. So now from the study area, you can see the other library. So crossing over, like I mentioned before, this is IKB. And like myself, the film industry seems to really like this building front, as you might recognize it from TV shows like The Magicians, The Order, Charmed, Supernatural, The X-Files, and other parts of campus have also appeared in things like Battlestar Galactica, The Man in the High Castle, She's the Man, Passengers, X-Men Origins Wolverine, Altered Carbon, The Age of Adeline. The list of TV shows and movies that have shot on campus definitely goes on and on, and I thought it was a fun thing to mention for this tour. Right in front of the library, there is the iconic clock tower, and it's pretty tall. I looked it up for the sake of this video, and it stands at about 120 feet tall. Also, right in front of the library is a nice grassy area with some stone paths and little stone seats, I guess I'll call them that, and overall it's a pretty nice area to sit, especially when it's sunny outside. Alright, now let's actually head inside the building. As you walk in, there's these really nice kind of old school architecture arches. I clearly don't know the right term, but then there's a little computer lab and going just past that to the right, there's Ike's Cafe. You can grab coffee, snacks or lunch, and then there's a little sitting area if you want to eat here as well. thing you see when you go up the stairs is the study area which I should have filmed a little bit better but it's not necessarily quiet so it's good for study groups. Next up is the Chapman Learning Commons which I personally really liked. I love the high ceilings and overall just the way that it looks is something that I really enjoy. I'll let you have a look for yourself. This room also has Mac computers as opposed to PCs like on the first level, so if you're more of a Mac person, it's nice that those are available to you. Just outside this room, there's this desk here where you can borrow equipment like laptops, tablets, recording devices, chargers, and other things. I know the chargers come in really handy in case you forgot yours at home. And now we are coming to one of my favorite study rooms, which some people call the Harry Potter room because of its style and the paintings on the wall. I actually didn't know where this was until way later into my university degree, but I'm really glad that I found it because it's a great study spot. I love its look and it's really quiet and it has high ceilings and also gets lots of natural light. Going up the stairs, there's another one of those open study areas that is not necessarily a silent study area, so it can be a good place to meet groups as well. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and walk out of the library. And this is what the other side of IKB looks like. Obviously, I like the other side better. Moving on to the Life Building, which is pretty close to IKB. This actually used to be the Student Union Building, or the sub. Then it became the old sub, and then they renovated it into this. There's a Starbucks here, International Student Advising. Then there's the Wellness Center. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this Collegium. There's more than one of these on campus, and it's basically like a residence lounge, but for first year commuting students. I did this back in first year, and I really loved it. It gave me a place to hang out between classes and meet other first year commuter students so I definitely recommend signing up for this if you're in first year and are commuting to campus and also in this building is a nice seating area where a lot of people will eat their lunch or hang out with friends there's also a subway and a booster juice and a nice new gym in the lower level but I didn't really want to film people as they worked out Right by the Life Building is this new bus loop. Unless you choose to opt out, your student fees actually come with a monthly bus pass that will let you ride the bus, C bus, or SkyTrain as many times as you want that month. Next to the bus loop is the Aquatic Center, but I didn't really want to film inside of it because it felt a little bit creepy to film people in their bathing suits from the window, so I'll leave a link down below if you want to see it more in detail. 
Moving on to the nest, there was this construction going on when I was filming the tour, but thankfully I have this footage from when I was trying to get a thumbnail for another video. So yeah, this is the nest. It's basically our student union building. It's pretty new, so the architecture is quite modern and it has a bunch of great sustainability features. I'll leave a link down below to those if you're interested. These steps here are a really great place to socialize and hang out and eat lunch. And right above there is this nest-like structure, which makes sense given the name of the whole building. I'll show you what's on top of it later. And down here is the pit, which is the pub slash nightclub. And this is where students will often party and hang out at night. Then there's a bunch of different places where you can get food, snacks, or drinks. Here's some of them. Now in the elevator, you can actually see some of what's on the other levels by reading the door. There's club rooms, event rooms, there's even a small climbing wall, which is not mentioned on that list. But right now, I'm actually going to the top level. So here is this rooftop, which can be a great place to come to on sunny days. From here, you can see parts of campus, and there is also this little rooftop garden, which is run by a student club called Roots on the Roof. And now showing you this lounge, which is actually what's on top of that nest thing that I showed you earlier. It's a nice area to chill out. And just behind that, what you can see through the glass is the gallery, which is a restaurant with a patio. And it's a great place to grab a bite or get drinks with friends after class. And this is the emptiest I've ever seen the patio on a sunny day because it was reading break, but it usually gets busier. going inside the bookstore. Here you can get the t-shirts, the hoodies, the crewnecks, all the kind of stuff that you see people wearing around campus. And going down this way is where you will find all of the textbooks, but I seriously recommend that you look on the Facebook groups first to see if you can find a used version of the book that you're looking for. It'll save you so, so much money because new books can be so expensive. And of course, you can get your stationery here, you can get your pens, your highlighters, your notebooks with the UBC logo on them. But for simpler items, I would honestly just recommend going somewhere else because they do tend to be a little bit more expensive here. And towards the back of the bookstore is this access desk. Here's where you'll pick up your UBC card, otherwise known as your student ID card. And this is also where the lost and found is. Leaving the bookstore, we are now walking along University Boulevard, which you'll likely be walking through often. And at the intersection of University Boulevard and Main Mall, which I already talked about, is the Martha Piper Plaza slash Fountain. But honestly, I think most people just call it the Fountain. And it was empty when I was filming, I'm guessing because it was reading break, but I actually just found out recently that apparently between classes is when the Fountain will turn on. And based on the height of the water, that's how much time you have left to get to class if you have back-to-back -back classes. So I thought that was kind of cool and worth mentioning. So now back on Main Mall, I'm going to show you the chemistry building. This is actually one of UBC's oldest buildings, so it has that more traditional university look, I guess I'll call it, which I personally really like. And this is one of those buildings that is a popular filming spot for movies and TV shows, so you might recognize parts of it. And inside, again, is that kind of historic looking architecture. And in this building, you'll find classrooms and research labs, offices, lecture halls, and so on. And if you're not a chemistry major, it doesn't mean you won't have classes here, like I'm a psychology major, but I had a couple classes in this building and there's definitely been some renovations and I wanted to highlight this section where there's colored glass. I think I came at a really great time when the sun was hitting the windows just right and the hallway looked really pretty. 
Across the chemistry building on the other side of Main Mall is Sauter, which is the business school at UBC. And as you can tell, this is a more modern type of building and it's pretty nice. As a commerce miner, I definitely spent quite a lot of my time here. And as you walk in, you're in this big hallway area, which is actually called the CPA Hall. And behind those green columns is a cafe where you can get coffee and food, but it was closed during this time. And these stairs going down lead to some lecture halls and there's a nice little seating area next to them. And now showing you this study area. You can also book rooms like the ones I'm walking by to study in, but they're especially useful for when you need to work on a group project. You can also book some at some of the other libraries if you'd like. And you can kind of see those bookable rooms a little bit better now that I'm walking back. Now I've actually moved upstairs and I tried to film some of the lecture halls, but the ones I tried were actually locked at this time. So then you can see me going down this hallway because I wanted to show you at least one of the smaller classrooms. But as I walked in with my camera, there was someone in there and we made awkward eye contact that I felt awkward and I rushed out and then I forgot to show you Sauter's library. But if you do want to see a bit more of the classrooms, most of my university vlogs include my classes at Sauter. Right next to the Sauter building is this kind of a food court. I'm not really sure you can call it that, but there's a sushi place and a Tim Hortons. And right next to it is a Triple O's where you can get burgers, shakes, and other food. The lineup for this during lunchtime is actually pretty long. If you've watched my university vlogs, you probably recognize this spot as I definitely got food here kind of often. Yet again, we are back on Main Mall. It is the most central walkway on campus, so you'll definitely be walking along here a lot, like I mentioned before. And obviously it looks pretty empty now, but between classes, it actually gets really busy. Now stopping to show you the Beattie Biodiversity Museum, which in my entire undergrad I never actually went to, but it's a natural history museum and it's supposed to be really good. They have over 500 exhibits and this skeleton of a blue whale, which is apparently the largest animal to roam the planet, so that's pretty cool. And there's this courtyard right in front of it. And then behind the ticketing area, there is also a little cafe, which again was closed at the time that I was filming this. Right next to the museum is the AERL building, which honestly I'm only really showing you because I wanted to see if this lecture hall was open. I spent a lot of my time here in second year and I thought it would be nice to show you. Moving on, this is the engineering cairn and it kind of changes looks frequently as it's a campus tradition for different groups to paint over it, sometimes just for fun or other times to bring awareness to certain events or causes. And since that was the engineering cairn, it kind of makes sense for the engineering buildings to be in this same area. So here I'm just walking through one. And now I've reached the Engineering Student Center where engineering students will study, hang out, and sometimes there's even parties here. Now the computer science building where I spent many frustrating hours when I decided to take a computer science class and really struggled through it. And 
the classrooms were closed again because it was reading break, but I kind of tried to show you what they looked like. They're really just standard computer labs. This is the forestry building. Even if you're not in forestry, you can definitely come and study here. And it's one of those popular study spots because it's so nice inside. There's lots of study tables and you can come study by yourself or with a group. And there's nice natural light that comes through the ceiling skylights and there's a couple of plants here and there which give the space more life as well. And I really wanted to highlight SafeWalk in this tour, so this is one of the pickup hubs. Basically, SafeWalk is a program designed to accompany students from one place to another and make them feel more safe. This is especially great if you're leaving a building alone. Say you stayed at the library studying till late and don't want to walk alone in the dark, you can call SafeWalk and they'll either send someone to walk with you or sometimes they'll even send a car to drive you. I know, for example, I had to leave a party alone one night and it was a far walk to get back to my residence and I called up safe walk and they drove me back to my residence and I felt so much safer than I would have if I had returned alone. Campus is pretty safe overall but this does make me feel better and I think better safe than sorry anyways. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to the fear of walking alone at night so I thought I'd let you know about this. Close by the forestry building is Totem Park and Orchard Commons, which are both first year residences. And I do have a move in vlog into Orchard Commons when my sister was living there. So if you want to see more of Orchard Commons and what the rooms look like, I'll leave that link down below along with other UBC videos I've made. This is the Center for Interactive Research on Sustainability, but that's quite a long title, so most people just call it SIRS. And of course, it is a really sustainable building. There's some study areas, offices, and labs upstairs, but I thought I'd show you this lecture hall. I had a lot, a lot of classes here, and I actually really like the space. It's pretty big, it seats about 400 people, so it's definitely used for larger lectures. This is usually the kind of area that I would sit at, and I kind of thought I could have gotten a thumbnail for this video here, so here's me trying to do that. I don't think I'm using this as a thumbnail, so I thought I might as well include the footage in the video anyways. And here's me running back for my camera when I thought I heard someone come in, but it was a false alarm. And now walking along West Mall, which is where Totem Park, Orchard Commons, and Sirs were all along. So that means we've moved from that main mall walkway. And now getting to the Kenny building, which is the psychology building. Obviously, as a psychology major, I spent a lot of time here. There's a couple of study areas, but it was never really my preferred study spot. But I did participate in a lot of research studies here, as all psychology majors usually do. And if you've been to this building, then you know that it can be a bit of a maze when you're trying to find a specific room, especially on some floors. So if you're participating in a research study, I suggest that you give yourself a bit of extra time. Back to walking on West Mall, that is one of those bike share stations that can be a really great alternative to actually owning your own bike. And we're in the area of the Ponderosa Commons residences, so most of the buildings that you're seeing right now are actually student residences. And 
And in the Ponderosa Commons area is the Audain Art Center with art studios and workspaces. So if you're a visual arts student, you'll likely spend time in here. And this is the building that I lived in my second year. If you want to see a detailed tour of it with all the amenities and the room that I lived in, I'll leave that link down below. And that's it for the tour, but before you click off, I do want to mention again that I have lots of other UBC content on my channel. I'll leave them all linked below. This tour took hours and hours to film and edit, so I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. And obviously I wasn't able to film all of campus. It is really big, but I tried to show you most of the main areas and I hope that this was helpful to you.